Its majorities, when faced with clear alternatives, will make the Barabbas choice, as did a mob centuries ago when Pilate confronted them with the need to decide. Your discipleship may see the time come when religious convictions are heavily discounted. All right, welcome to the Liberation Theology and the Latter-day Saints series. This is episode two of the series. In this episode, we're going to focus primarily on a an anchor point that we can look to where we can see the contrast between Savior theology and liberation theology. What is Savior theology? It is that we do need a Savior of our sins and of ourselves, of our individuals, or of ourselves as an individual. Uh, liberation theology decries this. It says, you know, that's, that's not what Jesus was. Jesus was a political Messiah. And liberation theology is about liberation, right? Overcoming the, uh, the oppressors at hand, typically looking at political oppressors. So a great example of this, and you have to wonder why this is written the way it is, because we find it in all four of the Gospels. The example is that of Pilate, Jesus, and Barabbas. And here we have three figures, one of the state, right, the Romans, the oppressors, one of the oppressors at least, that are over them, over the Jews. And then you've got Jesus, who is the Savior over sins. And then you have Barabbas. Now, it's important to understand that Barabbas is a zealot and probably a Sicarii, and I'll go over that in a minute. A Sicarii, well, I'll go over that in a minute. So you're going to have a contrast here, a perfect contrast, and all of the authors of the the, uh, uh, Gospels in the New Testament want to point this out for very good reason. They want to show what Jesus is not. So let's set the stage here a little bit. In the time of Jesus, early on would have been near his birth, Uh, and then coming up through his life, and then for decades after, until you get the destruction of the temple in AD 70, um, you have a movement there of certain, um, some even call it a sect of Jews, that it's the fourth sect, or some call it the fourth philosophy, which is that of the zealots. And the zealots are are politically motivated to overthrow the Romans, the oppressors. And this has been attempted at smaller scales many times. And there's been some small movements around this. This was done early on in Jesus' life, maybe even while he was in in Egypt or uh, soon after he returned. And, you know, there were were a number of these zealots that had organized under, under individuals that were sometimes called messiahs. So they are messiahs, and they would be more along the lines of what a a Jewish messiah would be thought of as a political messiah to overthrow the oppressors. So you had a number of these different messiahs, and then here comes Jesus Christ, who is also a messiah. So when you see this as part of the stage in in Jesus' time, you can understand a little better why, what people, why people are asking about, is he the Christ? Is he the Messiah? And what does that mean? And Jesus, of course, is going to give a very different answer and a different example than what many of the Jews are looking for. And this is why many of the Jews are pulled over into this movement of the zealots. Barabbas is one of them. So this scenario here is given to us so that we can see that there are two different choices here. And by the way, Barabbas' first name in many of the original Greek scripts, transcripts, manuscripts, is Jesus Barabbas. Jesus Barabbas. So if we look at that, we can say there's two different Jesuses here. And which one are we going to choose? Do we choose one 
who's going to throw off the chains of the oppressors, the liberator over political oppressors? Or are we going to throw, are we going to pick the Jesus who is our savior over our sins? Because that's about who we are becoming, how we grow and become more like him. Another point is that Barabbas means son of the father. And so you have Jesus, who is the son of Heavenly Father, the son of the Father as well. And so again, you've got two very similar things to look at. This is set up in a framework of the Day of Atonement, where the high priest would take the two different goats. There would be one that would be purified and have no sins. That's the one that is going to be sacrificed and die. And then the other one, all the sins are put on that goat, and that is the scapegoat who is let loose out of the city. Barabbas becomes the scapegoat because that is what the Jews choose. It's not all of the Jews, by the way. This is primarily the chief priests, the high priests, the Sadducees, the elders. This is the aristocracy of the Jews. They're the ones that are rallying the people here, whoever might be there in the crowds. Remember, this is during Passover. This is Jerusalem's pact. This is unlikely the followers of Jesus. So let's go to Mark 15 here and and look first at Mark, and then I'm just going to go into one verse in John 18, or uh, yeah, John 18, to talk about this scenario here, because this, again, they're giving us this for a reason. This is something that I think happens all the time. Where, where people fall into a the idea of, of they want a Messiah who is a liberator. Verse 2, when Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? So remember what's happened here this entire week. Jesus kept saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Well, Jesus was coming in as the king when he came in to the, through the east gate of Jerusalem on the donkey, and he went to the temple, right? That's what launches all this, and this whole thing really, really culminates in this last week about Jesus being the king of the Jews. We oftentimes think, yeah, it's just this Davidic thing, and it is, but it's something much larger than that because as it's played out here, it is what kind of a king are we talking about? Is this a political king? Or is this a king who is a Melchizedek, a king over spiritual things, working with the kingdom of God? So Pilate says, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. Then we go to verse 6. Now at that feast, being Passover, he released unto them one prisoner, right? This is a ritual. This is a tradition for this to happen at at the feast of Passover to let someone go. They get to choose who is going to be set free. This is a pardon that the people give to one of the individuals on trial here. It says here in verse 7, And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him. This is a revolutionary He is a revolutionary. We oftentimes hear, well, Jesus was a revolutionary. He was a spiritual revolutionary, right? And and the social changes that he's looking for, yes, they're revolutionary, but they're built under spiritual principles, under the gospel of Jesus Christ, not building up into some type of a political overthrow of the oppressors. And that gets... That terminology with Jesus as a revolutionary is oftentimes thrown in there just as a little bit of a, here's just a little bit of liberation theology for you. So Barabbas had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. This is what really makes him a Sicarii. Now a Sicarii is, you may have heard of a Sicario, which is Latin, which is, uh, it comes from the Latin, it's, it's Spanish, it's used in Spanish, to, uh, as, as a word for a hitman, in, especially in Latin America. Oftentimes, 
talking about the cartels. If there's a hitman in the cartel, this is a Sicario. They're assassins. That's what a Sicario is. They're assassins. So apparently, Barabbas is an assassin among the group of zealots. Now, there are two distinct groups, it appears. There are the zealots as a whole, who are revolutionaries, but then there are also Sicarii, who are those that also commit murder. But Barabbas then is one of these characters, maybe not a messiah necessarily, but in that mold of a political type of messiah who is fighting the Romans and probably has murdered one or more officials or guards or others of the Romans. So in verse 9 then, it says, But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? He keeps calling him the king of the Jews. This is, of course, what's going to end up on the sign above his head on the cross. Again, that whole scenario is should be looked at as what kind of a king is he? So verse 11, But the chief priests moved the people. See, this is... This is the aristocracy that gets all this going, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And by the way, the Sicarii oftentimes killed Jews also, who they were not happy with, that were not supporting the movement enough. So this is, they're letting loose someone that is also not good to Jews, typically, to their own people. And verse 12, And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him who ye call the king of the Jews? See how that's mentioned over and over again. And they cried out again, Crucify him. And verse 15, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And then, of course, right immediately, you go right to the Romans here, the guards, the soldiers, who begin to mock him as the king. So there's, again, there's this, this dynamic here about what does a king mean and what kind of a messiah is this king. They give him his, the reed as a staff. They give him the robe of scarlet, and they give him the crown of thorns. Now, lastly, we go to John 18, and we see, But ye have a custom that I should release one unto you, release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? John is the same thing. He's emphatic about this. Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. Now, in Greek, that term robber right there is lestes. This is the exact same term that Josephus, the Jewish historian, uses when talking about the zealots and the murderers, the Sicarii. And it's the same term that is used for those that are crucified with Jesus. We hear robbers, right? Well, maybe. But these might also be, is, would robbery necessarily require death and a horrible death like crucifixion? Maybe. But if they are as uh, more along the lines as what uh, Josephus uses, it's translated as bandits. That's the term he uses for revolutionaries. Were they also Sicarii? Were they murderers? Were they part of, were they insurrectionists that were fighting against the Romans who were also crucified? And here he is between two of these revolutionaries on the crosses who are seen as political saviors to a certain degree of overthrowing Rome. And here he is in the center, the king of the Jews, who is completely innocent, dying and being sacrificed overall for what? For the sins of the world. This is a perfect example, I think, of, of understanding the contrast between these two doctrines. Salvation theology, which is what we believe in, it is obviously the core of the doctrine of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and liberation theology on the other side. Which Jesus 
do we choose? Now, I want to make one clarification before ending this episode. And that is, it doesn't mean that Jesus Christ isn't also a liberator to a certain degree over political issues. I mean, you have um, you know, those that pray for deliverance from the Assyrians and from the Egyptians, right? There, there is a liberation that happens politically to watch over the people of God. But this is not the focus of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ or of his mission, right? That's, that's not what it is. Even when we go back and think about the Exodus, we look at it as a metaphor spiritually for getting out of Egypt, traveling through the wilderness, and then exaltation coming into the promised land. So I'm not saying it doesn't; it's not there at all. But again, it's an issue of a values hierarchy. And what, what liberation theology wants to do is raise temporal salvation. A temporal salvation above a spiritual salvation. So as these things do start coming up, and they will, you're going to start hearing more about this. Think about the example of the, the choice that Pilate offers the aristocracy of the Jews between Jesus, who is the spiritual savior of you individually, and Barabbas, who is the savior politically over the oppressors. Thanks for your time. <music>